So we've covered the theory behind first and second order derivatives of parametric equations. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to present you a couple of questions on the topic. I want you to read the questions, pause the video, have a crack at them and then come back and check your answers against the work and I'm going to present. Here you go. First thing, I've given you two equations, x and y in terms of t. I want you to find the first and second derivative of these. Then the second one, a slightly more complex question. First thing, I want the first and second derivative. Then I want the coordinates of the turning point. And then I want you to prove the co curve is always concave up. So pause the video and have a crack at these. So first one, find the first and second order derivative of the curve defined parametrically by this. Now first derivative, remember, dy by dx, what that's given by is dy by dt divided by dx by dt. Shorthand way of saying that is y dashed over x dashed. So we need to calculate both of these and plug it all together. So if x is equal to 2 plus 1 over t, the 1 over t, to make it easier for myself, I'm going to write it as t to the negative 1. So I can then say, fine, so x dashed is going to equal negative t to the negative 2, which is negative 1 over t squared. Second one, if I look at y, I want to calculate y dashed. Well, in order to do y dashed, we have to use the quotient rule. And what that then gives me is 2t, bracket t minus 1, take away 2t, bracket t plus 1, all over t squared minus 1, all squared. So what I can now do is now that I've got both of those, I can plug it all together and see what I get as my final derivative for y dashed. What that then gives me, if I think about each of the terms on their own, I get 2t squared and a minus 2t squared. They're going to cancel. I then get minus 2t minus 2t. So I end up getting is negative 4t over t squared minus 1 all squared. So to get my full derivative, I do y dash divided by x dashed. So in this case, I do negative 4t over the t squared minus 1 all squared divided by negative 1 over t squared. So the negatives cancel. Remember to divide by a fraction, we turn it into a times and flip it. So it's the equivalent of times t squared. So I then end up getting negative 4t cubed over t squared minus 1 all squared. So there's my first derivative dy by dx. Second derivative of the curve defined parametrically by this. Well remember we've got our formula for that one as well. So second derivative d2y by dx squared. Think of it again in terms of your x dashed y dashed. What I end up getting for that, I get x dash y double dash, take away y dash, x double dash. So first derivative of x times second derivative of y, take away first derivative of y times second derivative of x, all over first derivative of x, so x dashed cubed. So all I need to do is get my two second derivatives, work it through from there, and I'm laughing. So my first derivative of x is given there, negative 1 over 2, or over t squared, sorry. So my second derivative, if I take the derivative of that, so write it as 2t to the negative 2, focus on it written in this format here, what I'll end up getting is 2 over t cubed. So that's my second derivative of x right there. Second derivative of y, so y dashed is given by this. So again, I'm going to use the quotient rule to get my second derivative, y double dashed. What I'll end up getting is negative 4, bracket t squared minus 1 all squared. Take away 4t times 2, bracket t squared minus 1, times the derivative of the t squared minus 1, so times then 2t. And that's then going to be all over the denominator squared, so t squared minus 1 all squared, so that's going to be all over t squared minus 1 to the power of 4. So what I now need to do, simplify the top and stick it together as one single fraction. Then once I've done that, I can go back and use my formula here to get my second derivative. If I were to then take the top 
and rewrite it, what I'd end up being able to rewrite the top as is negative 4 bracket t squared minus 1 squared take away 4 times 2 times 2, so 16t squared bracket t squared minus 1. And that's all over the t squared minus 1 to the power of 4. What I can then do is if you look at that top line there, t squared minus 1 is a common factor. So if I take t squared minus 1 out, what I end up getting is t squared minus 1. I'm also going to take negative 4 out as a common factor as well, because that's a factor of both of those terms. What I end up being left with is t squared minus 1. This goes here. Take away 4t squared. And that's then all over t squared minus 1 to the power of 4. Simplify this so I can cancel out a t squared minus 1 from the top and the bottom. Simplify what's in the bracket. What I then end up with is I end up with negative 4 bracket negative 3 t squared minus 1. But I'm going to take the negative out of the bracket again as a common factor. And what I'll end up with is 4 bracket 3t plus 1 all over t squared minus 1 cubed. So now I have all the parts here. I've got my derivative of y, my second derivative of y, my derivative of x, my second derivative of x. I can go back and plug it into the formula and see what I get from my d2y by dx squared. So if I stick it all together, I get x dash times y double dashed. So I end up with negative 1 over t squared times 4 bracket 3t plus 1 over t squared minus 1 cubed. Then end up with take away y dash times x double dashed. So take away negative 4t over t squared minus 1 all squared times my second derivative of x. So times 2 over t cubed. That whole thing then is going to be over the derivative of x cubed. So it's going to be all over this here, the negative 1 over t squared cubed. Which there looks like a great fun expression. But what we can now do is take a bit of time, do the working and simplify the whole thing as best we can. What we should end up getting for our overall solution for that is negative 4 t cubed, t to the power of 4, sorry, bracket 1 minus 3t minus 2t squared. That's then going to be all over t squared minus 1 to the power of 3. So cubed. So there you go. That's your second derivative expression there. Looks a lot more fun than it is, doesn't it? But sometimes a bit of hard work has to go into the question. Always try and simplify it as much as you can, regardless of how it looks in the end. Second question, find the first and second derivatives of the cur curve defined by this. Determine the coordinates of the turning point and then prove it's always concave up. So for the first one, part A, again, same as we did before. Calculate our x dashed and our y dashed. Now remember, for these ones, take this to be t to the negative 2 for both of them. So for my derivative of x, what I end up with is 2t take away but then bring the power down so it's going to be minus minus 2 so plus 2 t to the negative 3 and my y that's going to give me 2 t I'm then going to have a plus minus so I'm then going to have minus 2 t to the negative 3. So for these if I take the x I end up with 2 t plus 2 over t cubed stick it all as a single fraction I then end up with 2 bracket t to the power of 4 plus 1 all over t cubed. Second one, very similar fashion. Write it out like this. The only difference that's going to be between this one and this one is the subtract. So I end up with 2 bracket t to the 4 minus 1 all over t cubed. So my first derivative dy by dx 
what that's going to equal is this, so my y dashed divided by my x dashed. Well, remember, divided by a fraction means turn it over and make it a times. So it's going to equal this, so 2 bracket t to the 4 minus 1 over t cubed times the t cubed over t to the 4 plus 1 times 2. And what happens is I cancel the 2s, I cancel my t cubed, and I end up with quite a nice expression and t to the power of 4 minus 1 over t to the power of 4 plus 1. Now if I really fancied it at this point, I could look at answering part b right now. Determine the coordinates of the turning point. Well, we know the turning point is a stationary point. So we know that that is when this is going to equal 0. So for that to equal 0, t to the 4 minus 1 equals 0. So for t to the 4 minus 1 equal to 0, t to the 4 equals 1. So what that then means is that t equals 1. Take this and substitute it back into my coordinates, my uh, curve defined by t at this point here. So t is equal to 1 in both of those. So I get x equals t squared minus 1 over t squared. So I get 1 minus 1. So x is equal to 0. And my y is equal to t squared plus 1 over t squared. So that would be 1 squared plus 1 over 1. So my y would equal 2. So my turning point for this one is at 0, comma, 2. Now you might think t equals 1 is actually wrong because I could also take negative 1. But if I put negative 1 in here for t, they're going to cancel out the negatives and I'm actually going to end up with the same point here. So regardless of whether I choose t equal to 1 or negative 1, I'm going at the same turning point. So it doesn't really matter too much there. So that there, coordinate my turning point. Next part. We want to calculate the second derivative of this. Now remember, for my second derivative, what I have to do is take x dash times y double dashed, minus y dash times x double dashed, all over x dashed cubed. So I need to get my second derivatives of x and y. So to do that, what we'll do is we'll do x double dashed here. So there's my x dashed, so that's going to be 2. Take away 6t to the power of 4. So to the power of negative 4, that's going to then end up equaling 2 to the power t to the power of 4 minus 6 all over t to the 4. You can take it 2 as a common factor if you want. And we get 2 bracket t to the 4 minus 3 all over t to the power of 4. Second derivative of y, so y double dashed. What that's going to equal is second derivative of this part here. So I get 2 plus 6t to the power of negative 4 this time. So again, club it all together as one fraction. I get 2t to the 4 plus 6 all over t to the power of 4. Again, take 2 out as a common factor and I get 2 bracket t to the power of 4 plus 3 all over t to the power of 4. I then want to take this, now that I have my second derivative of y, plug it all back into my formula for the second derivative, d2y by dx squared, that we discussed previously. So d2y by dx squared. We know that that's going to equal x dashed y double dashed minus y dashed x double dashed all over x dashed cubed. Plug it in there, play about with it and simplify it as best I can. And what I'll end up with is that I get d2y by dx squared equals t to the power of 6 all over t to the power of 4 plus 1 cubed. So there you go, that's my second derivative. Now I want to answer part c now, prove the curve is always concave up. Well if I substitute in t equal to 1 here, what I'll end up getting is that t equals 1, I'll end up getting that I get 1 over 1 plus 1 cubed, so 1 over 8. So what that means is that d2y by dx squared is positive. So d2y by dx squared is greater than 0. Therefore, what I can say is it's concave up. So there we go. We've answered all parts of this question using our first and second orders of the curves defined within a second variable. This is how we can use this sort of question here in this sort of technique. So be aware of all the steps involved and how we can use it.